Hello, my name is Ochiel <laughs> and it's a great privilege and honor for me to appear before you and to make the Deputy President join Ochiel that lazy man. Lord, allow me to begin with uh, where my very good friend Mr. Somani stopped. I think he intended to cite to you paragraphs 209 and 210 of the Supreme Court decision. He stopped at 208, I believe that was a mistake. Because if you look at paragraph 209, this is what the Supreme Court has said this afternoon, that the fellows of the Constitution made it possible for litigants, like our client, the Deputy President, without exception, to appoint the courts for redress of fundamental rights and on issues concerning interpretation of the Constitution to determine whether any law or anything said to be done under the authority of the Constitution is constitutional. Paragraph 210, Supreme Court, this afternoon, the court says that this constitutional inquiry the inquiry to involve in extends the court when conducting this inquiry should bear in mind the unlimited beliefs contemplated under Article 23. Now that's sufficient to clear any doubts about your jurisdiction and to clear any doubts about your power to give conservatory orders. If there are any doubt, the court should now feel comfortable. Now, look, during the break, I inquired for my learned friend, Mr. Pienkolo, a very good friend of mine, and I asked him, Dr. Pienkolo, who is the governor of Nero County? He told me, Kawira Mangaza. Then I asked him, by what authority? Is he still submitting on points of law, my lord? It's true. He went to there. He <laughs> 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 told me by a conservatory order. And so, my lord, this court can give conservatory orders against impeachment. The conservatory order we are speaking about, the one I was speaking to my colleague about, was given to this court not so far ago, on the 21st of August 2024, in petition. P49 of 2024. Let me come to the other case, the Kissing Governance case. I know Justice Ogunda, you are familiar with that case, you're not asking that much. Because at some point you gave directions <coughs> indicating that you would not interfere with the conservatory orders in place and that that matter would come before Justice Ogunda, which is the decision my learned friend, another good friend, Mr. Nemodi, spent a lot of time on. Lord, that case is different from this one on the issue of delay. Under Section 32 of the County Government Act, a vacancy in the office of deputy governor must be filled in 14 days. What did Purity Mora Torera do? She filed her petition on 1st of April 2024. The Senate impeached Dr. Robert Moya on 14th of March 2024. So she was coming to court outside the 14 days. And Lord, in this case, we have 74 days under the Constitution, Article 149. Those 74 days have history in the constitutional text. My Lord, if you look at page 233, of the CKRC final report, you find Kenyans speaking about a lot the need to allow the transitional processes to be disputed. Lord, the Constitution gives a lot of 14 day timelines, but in this case, it gives 74 days. And we submit that the purpose of that is to allow agreed parties to come to, before the court may be held. So, my Lord, on the issue of delay, which is a distinguishing fact, which is why the court did not give Kirea conservatory orders, but gave 
Mwangaza Conservatory Orders is that the 14 day period had expired when the petitioner went to court. But don't allow me to concur fully with two things that my learned friends, Mr. Nyamodi, and my good friend, Mr. Somani, say that conservatory orders are ready for the court because the court has a duty under Article 23 to fashion appropriate reliefs. Conservatory orders, as they said, help the court to preserve a matter. And the matter to be, to be preserved here is an impeachment both of, both of the National Assembly and the Senate and the subsequent nomination of Kithure Kinishi to the Office of Deputy Governor. And again, unlike Mora, he's here to take off here. So the subject matter before the court is still live. And you can and the need to preserve it. Look, on the nature of conservatory orders, I agree fully with the submissions of the Attorney General. The case they cite, TSS spinning, helps the petition more than it helps the respondent. Because in TSS spinning, the court says that conservatory orders act as tools for preservation of the subject matter hold the subject matter in situ. They maintain the situation of the subject matter before the mischief crept in. The mischief crept in here when Wendy Mutuse filed his motion. So the conservatory order preserves that state of affairs. It takes us to the point before the mischief crept in. More mischief will creep in if, despite this litigation, is sworn into office. Among other cases we agree with, cited by the National Assembly's Italian Industries, helps the DP on the point that conservatory orders are tools for preservation of a particular state of affairs. A particular state of affairs, which so far you preserved, is that our client is the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. We ask you to sustain the conservatory orders. My Lord, the Country Assembly of Embu, argued by the Supreme Court, is distinguishable. In that case, the Attorney General told the Supreme Court that if a vacancy occurs mid term in the office of Deputy Governor, then that vacancy would remain to the end of the term. The vacancy, paragraph 28, County Assembly of Embu, the Attorney General told the Supreme Court would remain to the end of the term, it would remain unfilled. That time, we had not yet amended Section 32, Capital B of the County Government's Act. It was amended in reaction to this Supreme Court case. And so the Supreme Court, to that suggestion by the Attorney General, says that no, 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 we cannot have an indefinite vacancy in such a vital office. That case is distinguishable. And the time when we have here is 74 days. We're yet to reach into a quarter of those days, my lord. And from the posture taken by this court, it's possible to hear this case and conclude it within those 74 days. My lord, this, this petition, within those 74 days. All the three chains of Kenyan court when required have risen to the occasion. BBI did not last the three, five years my friend Mr. Bianconi spoke about, it lasted a matter of months. And so it's possible for this court to hold things in place and to expedite the main petition. But not, unless that happens, my becoming friend, Professor Gidu Mijai, spoke about the dissipation of the subject matter. He said this has already dissipated. My friend, Professor Gianda said, likened it to a death which has already occurred, and so it, there's no coming back from it. The Senate in their submission suggests damages. The petition does not give you for damages. In short, my lord, if at this stage the, the respondents can tell you that the court cannot craft remedies, Dr. Kian Kolu bases his preliminary objection on that point. 
He says that you should not touch this case code because you will not be, cost, not be able to craft any evidence after hearing the case. Although, if at this stage, before you hear the case on the merits, you can be told that what would happen when without conservatory orders you hear the case and the petitioners succeed? Now, as I move to conclude, the Attorney General urges you to find on the basis of the vacancies in the IDC that there's public interest in allowing the process to conclude. Lord, there is an authority, a court order by this court in proceedings to which the Attorney General was party. The Attorney General in January of this year, 26th of January 2024, in the Panisa case, the Abdullahi versus Attorney General was directed to reconstitute the IBC. He has not done that. Today, the Attorney General stands before you and tells you that on, on account of his delict, on account of his and his client's contempt of court, you should exercise your equitable discretionary remedy of conservatory orders in his and his client's favor. Another party cannot benefit from their own wrongdoing. That fact of vacancy in the IBC against an order of this court should not be evaluated in favor of the Attorney General and to the disfavor of the petitioners. Mr. Lord, are there any pending litigation on the IBC constitution? There are, yes, my Lord, but this order has not been stayed. It has not been appealed. That's okay. Yes, my Lord. My Lord, there's a case that we did with uh, my good friend, Mr. Adrian Kamada. It's called Itumi versus Law Society of Kenya, where Justice Omudi gave directions and orders to maintain the status quo pending the determination of the matter in court. It will be, through my good friend, Adrian Kamoto Njenga, went to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal, my Lord, affirming those orders, found that it was an act of mischief to ask the Court of Appeal to vacate conservatory orders meant to preserve the status quo pending the hearing of the matter in court. We submit that the application to vacate made before you is an act of mischief. There's another case, my lord, on this issue of vacating conservatory orders. This case was argued by my good friend, Mr. Yamodi, when he was still on the good side of this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Professor Gideon Ligai was also in it. Those days, Yamodi was a good guy. He had not joined the bad company of Mr. Gumbo, who is my friend. <laughs> now, this is what the Court of Appeal said. The Court of Appeal said that... Yamodi must be a bad guy if Gumbo is bad friend. <laughs> <laughs> the Court of Appeal said, my lord, that when weighty challenges have been placed before you, before a court, and the court has issued conservatory orders, one requires a very strong case to lift those conservatory orders. My Lord, a very strong case has not been made before you to lift the conservatory orders. Instead, a very strong case has been made to sustain and to affirm and to reiterate the conservatory orders. Lord, I close with the issue of public interest. And again, thanks to <coughs> the doctrine of precedence, you do not have to think too hard on this. In Attorney General versus Martini, shutting out 50 CISs whose appointment was questioned before the court, the Court of Appeal, my Lord, said that it would, not be, it would be no consolation to tell the Kenyan people that although service has been rendered, although unconstitutional service has been rendered, it's still service. The Court of Appeal said, my Lord, that service in violation of the Constitution is no service. And in a case that Professor Ojenda argued, there was no case. When I, mean, I didn't cite that 
I am the CTG. In response, normally I thought on points of law, you refer to cases that have been cited by the other side. No. Can't pick up my case. I didn't have it. Honored, if he didn't tell you this, he should have argued this. This is a good thing. You are talking about the public. The court of opinion of all. He cannot respond. Yes, yes, yes. Because otherwise, he also has the right to be found. Yes, I will. And we will be here for much longer time. Back and forth. Yes, we will be back and forth. Yes, we will be back and forth. Yes, we will be back and forth. If that would help to my Lord, how would we have, for example, presented to you the Supreme Court President? Because the purpose of the agenda as well, my Lord, is to distinguish and to tell the court points which they were said are concealed. Well, you say it, then we give him a right of and reply and the on it, that issue. It's in our submissions. It is. Do you accept that we'll give him a right of reply on that issue? On this case, yes, my Lord. Okay. Because it's in our submissions. Okay. The more case is in our submissions, my Lord. And you can distinguish it very short. And the court said, in short, that it is in the public interest to keep out a person if the validity of the appointment is questioned. He had granted his client to assume office despite uh, a court order to that appointment. As a matter of fact, the office here is a high state office. If Kitore Kindiki assumes office, he will make directives, he will make policies, he will commit omissions. My Lord, this court is yet to design a mechanism for reversing the policies, the decisions, the directives that you will make. If at the end, you find that the impeachment and the nomination of both are constitutional. The constitution would have been irreparably violated. And my Lord, I close on the point that this case is arguable. In fact, the courts had to stop Mr. Medimo many times and was lenient to many others of my colleagues who strayed into the merits of agenda being uh, at the forefront of that. The council argued, argued the merits on both sides of the IAP. And so now that demonstrates that parties are fighting at the least, they are ready to argue the petition and will do so as a, at the highest opportunity. We question the Lord to allow the request for conservatory others to please preserve the dispute and let our parents, our father parents for you be of some meaning under the constitution. Thank you for the opportunity, my Lord. Thank you. Look, may I donate, if I still have it, three minutes to my colleague, Mr. Bell. Lordship, 